guys, it's Barb with Inspire Me 360. And what I want to talk about today is the art of putting yourself first and your own desires and happiness. I know that this seems a little bit counterintuitive because for probably most of our lifetimes, we've been taught that humility and, you know, acts of service and all of these different things are the most important things that we should be using our time towards. And I'm not discounting that acts of service and humbleness and all of those things are not great aspects of the self, but it's so important crucially to your existence, to keeping a high energy in terms of your life force, to creating genuine, genuine, authentic happiness within your own self first. So essentially putting on your own oxygen mask before you help those around you. And especially women, I think we're taught from a very young age that it's not polite to put oneself first. And, you know, we have to be the nurturers, the givers, the ones that take care of everyone else. But oftentimes, oftentimes it makes or it plants a seed of a certain bitterness within us because we are not putting our needs first and it's a slippery slope. Men do this as well. Um, but again, this is something that a lot of women, um, they martyr themselves for the happiness of their families, for the happiness of their children, those around them. And then they forget to f of this darker energy. It is really, the power to put up boundaries about multiple things in our lives, who we want in our aura, you know, who we want next to us energetically, who's allowed to have access to our bodies, minds, thoughts, dreams, our spiritual journey, and really understanding that not everybody that is in your life, even if they're family, even if they're longtime friends, really should have access to those very sacred parts of yourself. If those individuals are not honoring you, and what I mean by honoring you is lifting you up. If their energy, their words, their actions are meant to cut you down or meant to, to make you question your value, that's a big indicator that they're probably not ideal for boosting your life force energy. It doesn't mean that you completely cut them out of your life. It just means that you are getting good at identifying the factors of who are your cheerleaders and who are your energy vampires. And it's not that an individual is going to be in that state for your entire life. It's that they could be in a lower vibrational state, not feeling really great about themselves. And so in a sense, when they get around your high vibrational energy, they start to kind of chip away at it because they don't feel good within their own energy field. And this is part of discernment and this is part of understanding the energetic resonance and frequencies of others in your life. Now, I'm not saying that you're always going to be high vibrational. There's going to be times when you're actually the one that is depleting others energy. And how can you identify this? It's pretty simple. If you are in a state where you're complaining a lot, when you're in victimhood, when you are speaking negatively about others, when you just have that pessimistic outlook, and again, you're bringing that to other individuals, that is a really draining energy. Now, if you're in that state and you're alone with yourself, you're also, your own energy body is going to feel that lower vibrational energy. And essentially it is your consciousness that is draining your spiritual energy. So you are draining yourself. And it's when we kind of slip into the dark night of the soul, when we really start to realize when we're in that hermit stage, when we're isolating, that we understand so acutely how we affect, how the conscious mind affects that those subtler layers of our soul body, of our energy body. And when we're, we're in the silence or when we're in the silence of ourself, essentially listening to the song of our own soul and the emanation of, you know, 
wherever we're calibrating right now is when we really learn to maneuver our own energy and adjust our own energy. Because again, that's this is what the journey is. We are here to learn about how we affect ourselves and how we affect others. And once we learn how to raise, how to specifically raise our own vibration and do it quickly, again, to benefit ourselves, to move ourselves into that beautiful, happy life force, life giving creative energy, then we can also attune ourselves to be able to be this beacon of light for others. But it takes us traveling into the lower vibration of self, understanding those dark spaces within the self that allows us that context to see and become our own light. And then have that beautiful self-loving discernment to realize what is good for us, what fills our cup and what is moving us toward those higher and higher expressions of consciousness. So really realizing that putting up boundaries, saying no, asking for what you need is part of this journey. And it's not self, it's not selfish. It's not wrong. It is this beautiful state where you start to love yourself enough to ask for what you need from those around you. I'm good at this. We have to really work on alleviating the guilt, both internally, because again, guilt is a very low vibrational thought form, and externally. So any type of guilt that others are projecting onto us to make us stuck or to cause our consciousness to be stuck in obligation towards them, anytime somebody is making you feel like you are obligated, it's not high vibrational energy. And when we absorb that and start holding that guilty energy within ourselves, again, it's a very self-defeating energetic state. So you have to really rid yourself of guilt energy. It's not positive. There is nothing wrong with being happy. There is nothing wrong with feeling full. There's nothing wrong with residing in a high vibrational state of love. You're allowed to love life. You're allowed to love others. You're allowed to surround yourself with amazing people. And you're not required to always be digging a ditch and always be making these crazy sacrifices. Being sacrificial and you know, residing in this mindset where, again, you are the martyr for the world. It's not a positive aspect of thinking. When we talk about truly being in divine service, the highest ratio or the highest calibration of being in divine service is being in this loving service. Well, where do you think love comes from? It comes from this spark of immense internal joy. And that internal joy is fed by the experience of happiness. So when we are truly happy, when we are serving ourselves, we can serve others. When we're in that state, we come to the table full. We come to the table being able to give because our cup is running over. So the giving is easy. The giving spills over naturally and it's effortless. This is the flow state. So remembering that one of the most important things that you can do on your journey is to figure out how to make yourself ridiculously happy. And once you're ridiculously happy and once everything is flowing amazingly well in your life, what you are giving to the world is just naturally going to be of service, of giving, of that beautiful, warm, amazing energy. It's a journey. I'm not telling you that this is going to be easy every step of the way. I know for myself, sometimes it's, you know, two steps forward and one step back. And I've been doing a lot of back to basics and reminding myself of all of the things I've learned along the way. And that's the way that it goes. You're going to, you know, you're going to feel this energetic up leveling. And then sometimes in terms of context, 
we slide back a little bit into the lower vibrations so that we can go back, drill down and rise again to a higher place. And that's the beauty of context. It is cyclical. It's, you know, we're going to learn these lessons somewhat over and over again. But every time you learn the lesson, there's a little bit more that you glean from that. And just like when you read a book or watch a movie, you know, over and over, you always kind of pick up a little, you know, these little hidden gems that you didn't necessarily pick up on the first time. And that is the aspect of learning. So I'm going to wrap this video up, but hopefully it was a little bit inspiring and hopefully it pushes you towards seeking out that beautiful, authentic, self-serving joy that is available to you in each and every moment. And I want to put a little caveat on this making sure that this joy is coming from the self, that we're not attaching to others outside the self to essentially cultivate our joy because this is a singular journey. The joy has to emanate. You have to be the light on your own. And then of course, you're going to be that lighthouse to draw in many more beautiful energies that align with you, the law of attraction, okay? But remember, you have to be able to be that self-generating light. You can't be getting that energy from somebody else. It is your journey to figure out how to create that energy within the self. What do I mean by this? It means that no relationship, no romance, no person, no job, no trip, nothing like that can create happiness for you. Yes, those are things that you can experience, but you actually have to do your own work. You actually have to learn how to create joy from within. If you are, you know, sitting in a bus stop, how do you create that joy? Just sitting there watching the world go by. If you are laying in bed at night, you know, how do you create that joy for yourself? Once you figure out the algorithm within your own blueprint of how to create this flow state, this joy from this internal place, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're experiencing. You can tap into this beautiful reservoir of divine creative life force energy, and it is available to you in each and every moment. But again, this is something that you need to do for yourself. And what it does in terms of your interactions with others when you have this very high vibrational energy that is available to you in each and every moment that you can tap into and cultivate from the self it makes each and every interaction more beautiful with others and it's not dependent on the outside world your happiness no longer depends on what others are doing. You are just innately happy. It also allows you to be free. It creates a lot of personal freedom because if your happiness and your state of being is not dependent on the outside world, then you are within your own sovereignty. You're that sovereign being, that lighthouse, okay? And then that's really when you become that teacher and that inspiration for others. You need nothing from the external world and you can give freely. So I'm going to wrap this particular video up and we'll see you in the next.